Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and I see that one of you guys have asked me to chat about Ethereum. And I thought, while I'm watching the Bitcoin market, which let's admit it is crumbling a little bit, um, I was fortunate enough to sell a little bit at 35,000, and we're going to try to buy that back if it hits 30,000. So the depth chart is showing that there's more pressure on the, the sales side. Um, than the buy side, but I mean, technical analysis, it's not the best. I don't like these candlestick things, but the depth is the one that I'm pretty much using. Uh, we're not playing for big money, so yeah. But that's Bitcoin, so while we're doing Bitcoin, let's look at Ethereum. And I mean, I do have a little bit of Ethereum, and you can see it is, it's down 13%, um, which is terrible. Uh, this bunkle thing is also pathetic. Um, I've got five of those coins. Um, don't ask me why I buy these things. Um, I, yeah, there's there's some interesting strategies you can do with these weird alt coins. But let's talk about uh, Ethereum. I think the best way to actually talk about Ethereum is to actually let's go open it up. So let's go check. Let's go see what's happening on. Ethereum. So I just learned the other day how to make my own custom token on Ethereum. And this worried me. The fact that I could go and spend half an hour learning how to create a token with basically very, very little programming skills. I mean, I can program like a little bit, but let's admit, I'm not, uh, I studied actuarial science, not, not computer science. But let's, let me show you guys. Um, so yeah, so this is the main account. You can see I don't have I don't have that much ether, but if we go to the testnet, um, that's where I was having I was having some fun. But it also worried me. Um, why is it taking so long? Um, when I was playing with this test net, what I did is I went and I created my my very own token. You can see I've got I've got a lot of ether. If, if that was if that was American <laughs> But remember, this is play, play ether. This is this is the test net. Um, okay, first thing off, it was a little bit confusing how this thing works. I mean, I created this this currency called Hype, which I want to use for for my little app that I'm developing. Um, but there were some problems with it in the sense that not only does it take forever to to send this stuff. I mean, when you come to send to say somebody else's address, it it takes quite a long time, even when you pump up the ether, it does, you know, there is a little bit of a scaling problem. Um, and especially in my app where I want the coins to be flowing very quickly between people, um, Ethereum is actually, it's, it's too slow. And I think there was a lot of people who were very interested in this coin because it, it allowed you to raise funds very easily. I mean, you could go I mean, if we go to the Ethereum website, the Ethereum website looks really cool. Um, let's go to Ethereum website. You can see that they kind of teach you, they like show you how, how easy it is to make your own token and you can do your own crowdfunding and it's really, really easy to do that. And I think a lot of people have now jumped on the bagwagon and have started creating their own tokens on this network. And I think it's been too successful. It's been too successful and they aren't coping with the load. Now look, like I said, I say actuarial science, not computer science. And there is a bunch of talk saying that the developers are fixing it and stuff like that. What I just found was interesting was that in South Africa, we did this, this thing called Civic. Um, one of the guys here in South Africa did this Civic token, uh, was able to raise 33 million US dollars um, on the blockchain, which he did through Ethereum. But what was very interesting was when you read the white paper, they don't plan to stay with Ethereum. They plan to move something to RSK. I don't know if you, if you pronounce it RISK or Rootstock or something like that. But that was in their, in their white paper was that even though they're raising their money with Ethereum, they're, they're ditching it. So that was an interesting one. And then I read I think if I just type in Litecoin, um, if it will pop up here on the news, where they were talking about using the Litecoin network. Um, where did I see that? 
where did I see that Litecoin article where basically someone who could have done a project on, oh, sorry, did I type in Litcoin? Litecoin, uh, yeah, here we go. So this is something that should have been issued on the Ethereum network, but instead they're using the Litecoin network. Now, if you guys subscribe to my channel, you know that I am, Litecoin is my, my biggest holding, um, but those have put in a cold wallet, we've you know, lock the key away and we're holding it for the long term. But Litecoin, I love this one. And we, we're seeing that people are now starting to use the Litecoin, um, are starting to use Litecoin blockchain, which I think is, is very interesting. Um, this thing is called, what's it called? Tether. And I think Tether is the top coin at the moment. Well, yeah, it's one of the top. It's like the only one that is gaining. Uh, you can, I don't know what cloak coin is, but as far as market cap goes, where is Tether on this list? Does Tether not even make the top 50? No, where, where is Tether? Oh, there it is. It's in 35th place. Um, so, I mean, it, it's interesting that they're using the Litecoin network. I think out of all the blockchain technologies, I think Litecoin is the best one. But then again, I'm super biased because I have bought that one. Um... I think what what I what I do like about Ethereum is that it's user friendly and um, you know someone as as simple as me was able to create a token on it. But I think that's also its downside is the fact that it it's too easy to make your own cryptocurrency on it. So what you're actually doing is the market is getting flooded with these amateurs like me coming and you know, using using the network. And while that's good for for the price because, you know, there's more demand, it does slow everything down. And, I mean, one of the big reasons why I didn't invest in Ethereum, I think I had a chance to invest at it when it was $10. Yeah, it was at $10. This is when I was buying, when was I buying my, my Litecoin? I was buying it in October. So October is somewhere like around there. So Ethereum was at $10. And from a financial point of view, that would have been the better decision would have been to buy Ethereum. But the reason why I didn't buy it was just because I, th I didn't understand Ethereum. I, I understood the concept of Bitcoin. It's, it's either a currency or it's a commodity. It's you know this little blockchain. It's a payment system. It's a store of value. You can use it for remittance and all these type of things. Whereas Ethereum, I didn't. I didn't fully comprehend it's it's a fuel for a blockchain and there's gas and that's why when like I use this thing here and I mean let's just let's just send to this address over here uh, let's copy yeah I'll copy anyway wallet um, and let's click on this one here and let's say send um, let's send to it let's send 10 million hypes to, to this one here. What I want you guys to check is watch my ether balance. Okay, so now yeah, we are going the fastest, but let's put this in here. You have to put in your little password, um, send transaction, and let's see what happens. Okay, so watch that 1974.92. Now, I don't think the confirmations go through unless I start mining it myself. But the thing is, when I start mining it, I will start getting Ether. But the thing that I wanted to highlight was when I made, or when I was sending a lot, like I was doing over here, you can see I was going crazy uh, a few days ago. When I was doing that, my Ether was dropping very quickly. Now, like I say, I don't know why it was doing that. Maybe it's just because of the test net. But it seemed that just sending these few transactions turned out to be a very, very expensive thing to do. And that's what I think is the problem with Ethereum is that at $10, at $10, it makes a lot of sense to come and make your own cryptocurrency and build an application on top of it. At the current price, which let's admit isn't even that uh, well, let's admit, John, even at $244, although, hold on, I've got on my phone the other exchange. What is it doing on the other exchange? Um, on the other exchange, it is at 227 So even at 227 it's still very, very expensive 
to build your applications on top of Ethereum if you want it to be sustainable. I think a lot of people are doing this thing called the initial coin offering. They're getting in on the hype. They're coming up with silly ideas. I mean, there's that one silly idea. What What, what is it called? It's called um, Numerium. Wait, wait, where is it? Um, Numeria. Yeah, this one, numeri.ai. Um, I mean, I love their logo. Their logo is really cool. Um, I made, I made, I think, 70% trading them because what I did is as soon as it got listed on Bittrex, I bought it. And then the next day, the price skyrocketed. I sold it and then it crashed. And they try, they're saying that they are a hedge fund on the blockchain that uses artificial intelligence where it's not. What they are is a kind of like, a, um, what's it called when you bet and the price keeps going up um oh my gosh i've just just had a blank thing with an a an auction sorry that's what it is what it is is you create your own data model and then you auction up your model and that is resembles the confidence so there's not actually any artificial intelligence well artificial intelligence how how most people define it happening here um and it's not really even a hedge fund, it's more like a betting thing. So it's still super cool. I mean, especially for my, my actuarial subscribers, I would highly recommend you guys come here, download the data set, have fun with it. Be careful, you are betting, so I think you have to be over 18. Well, that's the thing, there's no regulation yet. It's, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, this thing and a whole bunch of other stuff that shouldn't really be like an initial coin offering I mean, you could do this without the blockchain. Um, a lot of companies are using this because it's such a nice way to raise a lot of money. Like I said, Civic raised 33 million US dollars. I think Bunkor raised 150 million dollars. So everyone's trying to get in on the action. I mean, I think if we go, what what is that website called? Token, not Token Board, or um, it, it says what tokens are are coming out forgotten what the website is is called my spelling is sh shocking but someone's literally selling digital land for I don't even think it's a game like just digital land is one of his his tokens there's also this other thing called extra ICO um, let's see if this thing comes up called insurance where they talk about insurance and it's like really, really weird and complicated. But again, they're going to be listing on Ethereum to try raise um, funds. What is that insurance? Let's go insurance ICO. Nope, I am not finding it um, at all. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't even prep for this video. I was kind of like, we, we were busy watching the price um, it's at three, three, four. What I what I like to do is we, the South African price tends to lag the the American price. So we can see if this one's changing, how that's going to affect this one over here. There is actually a bit of an arbitrage for those of you who are interested in it um, to take like advance of the or take advantage of the uh, arbitrage. What you want to do is come to this website called Bitstamp. Um, you can come here and you can buy, see at 236. You can buy, uh, even as a South African, you could buy the coins here, then move them over to this exchange that I'm using called Luno and sell them. The reason why I'm not doing it, because I, I don't know if, if you're allowed to do it from a tax point of view. I mean, you are sending money outside of the country to Luxembourg. Also, where's the regulation? I mean, these guys could just be harvesting um, your banking details and your ID documents. And so it's a bit dodge, so I'm not doing it. But if you really, you know, if, you, if you've got that risk-seeking attitude and you, you know, want to risk it, there is that possibility of getting the, the arbitrage. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, the, these prices, it's... It, it, it is interesting. I don't know, don't really know what this line graph does. I need to read up on that. But from this one, it does seem like there's pressure on the price to go down. Although while we've been chatting, it has raised a little bit. So there is, there is a lot of fluctuation. Um, but anyway, I'm supposed to be making proper actuarial videos for you guys. 
but I am getting terribly distracted by all these cryptocurrencies. Um, I've even had a crazy idea, and I'm going totally off topic, but I've been looking at bees and I've been thinking maybe there's a way we can make a different type of blockchain. So not using blocks and chains, but look at bees and the way they communicate and see if we can create some sort of decentralized database um, mimicking, mimicking them. So I, I'm reading about bees and flowers and, oh, that robot bee looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it is quite fascinating, like, I mean, how they, how they do their whole little thing. So I think bees are quite a cool inspiration. Um, and then, of course, reading other textbooks just on the, the mathematics behind um, the whole blockchain and, you know, what, what it's all about. And, and I, I must say, if you guys are going to be investing in these cryptocurrencies, it's, it's a good idea to read up about them. So that when a new coin gets released, you can read through it and be like, is this snake oil or, or is this actually legit? Um, so yeah, so that's just what I've been, been doing, reading on some weird cryptocurrency stuff, reading up on bees. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe what we can do is, is have a go at making our own little, I, I want to create a decentralized database using mobile phones using like the whole hashing idea and the way bees communicate. Um, I think it should be a lot of fun. So that's, that's the app that I am programming, just for those who are, who are interested uh, a little bit more in that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to use, I was going to use yeah, the, the Ethereum coin and link it into my app and make you, you send it between. But I think the gas price is too high. Even those crash now, I still think it's too high. I still think it's a little bit too slow. So I want to see if I can maybe make my own decentralized database, uh, although I do think that is quite quite ambitious. Anyway, I think I've been talking for way too long. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the, the section, the comment section below. And yeah, stay subscribed because we will be releasing a whole bunch of those actuarial videos. And if you guys enjoyed me talking about cryptocurrencies, let me know and we can make some more videos like I said, I did want to do a video about Sia Coin and Storgy and just discuss which one's better. Um, but yeah, I think let's leave that for, for another day. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.